From the lads of Martin for advantage, we are heading out to Walnut Day. Woo! Let's go! So I'm here with Colin, and you're like the coordinator. This is my day, yes. This is, this is your day. It's all about me. Is it the first? Of, is it the first time it's been your day? Or yeah, it's the first been... time I've run this event. Yes, because it's, it's we came last year. This year it's bigger. It's better. There's more going on. Absolutely. Coffee in a free tank is a huge. I mean, the tank was worth more than double the ticket price. I mean. Well, it was very popular. We had these. Uh, we we thought it was a good opportunity for people to start. You know, we've had young kids there putting yeah, these yeah. tanks together. Seems to be the first way. game of bolt action ever being played over there and that on that. Well, on that have you seen the uh, the Caratan tables yeah, yeah, yeah. are stunning, yeah, aren't they? They are beautiful, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, no, I drove Absolutely. down to Crystal Palace last week to go and get those. Oh, you went to Crystal Palace? I went around there, yes, nice. that was great fun. Nice. Yes, yes, and it, it's good to see Warlord supporting them. I mean, absolutely you know, yeah no he's raising money for the we like it yeah absolutely really, yeah really no we're quite happy to do that so uh yeah so how much, what goes into this well you've got uh uh our factory there we've had this factory yeah. we're yeah. coming up to our second year here right um and we have to clear the whole area mm -hmm. in order and that's been going on since thursday Right. in order to get the area clear and then we get the tables in ready so for, for all of those tables there the picnic tables yeah so yeah they're, they're they're, they're, they've done they've done really well they've been quite popular but we obviously get the guys in there we've had yes. uh, the perry's turn up they turned yeah, up yesterday Earl, yeah, yeah they set up their board yes yeah that's here. right we had the right seminars there. so we got the seminars to organize so i had to organize all of that right i think i got one of them wrong so i confused someone oh, but anyway right, that's right. one of the things uh, we obviously got the demo tables down there, the epic, uh, yeah, getting yeah. that all laid out, trying to convince Paul to hand over his studio figures was quite a challenge. But we got there <laughs> in the end. Touch them. He, like, he's, he's very. <laughs> yeah, I've seen all the slain stuff is straight from those cabinets. Yes, there, yes, right? yeah, no, yeah. these are the, the guys that have painted them there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, they're, uh, they're beautiful. Paul has been twitching all day, but right. we got it. We got there. They're fine. And is that how you got him to agree to come today? So he could sort of keep a loose eye on it? I mean, how easy is it to get people like John and Paul and Rick to, oh, to commit to a seminar? Yeah, they all commit. They all love yeah. it, really. They do. Yeah, yeah they're, they're very good. That's very good because they've been they've been mobbed in there. You know, they've been wall to wall. There was you know people with those seminars around the back. Oh, we, we yeah. want to hear. These are the celebs, right? Absolutely, absolutely. For those of us that gave it. The tours of the factory have been running since ten thirty, and they're still. Uh, we've got the last one finally, and in ten minutes. Having little bits of lead thrown at them. Mm, yes. Yeah, 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 go, and, go and get to see. Go to see how. Warlord makes toy soldiers. Yeah, I mean, I, I went on the tour last year and we came back and did some filming on a separate yeah, day. Yeah. So it's really fascinating to see. Yes, yes. The one that got me was how much work is involved in the resin. Yes. <laughs> you, yes. You, you, you tend to think of like the premium products is the plus. Is the real no, skill no, is in the resin product. Skill is in that resin. Rachel's resin, she does. Uh, Rachel's resin. Rachel yeah. resin, we call it. I mean, yeah. she is a wonder. Yeah, yeah, you know, she's a marvel. Right. Well, look, it's, been a, it's a great day. <laughs> Yep. Hi there, I'm here with Connor, who's in one of the, what, tents, marquees? Yeah, marquees. Uh, with various games going on. So, uh, Connor, what have we got going on here? So we've got a Western Desert uh, uh, battle going on here, probably Tunisia, judging that the Tiger 131. The uh, Tiger 131, Tiger, Tiger Museums. Yeah. What, Tiger? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the tent, uh, Indian Tent Army, slash, as we know, Ooh. 8th Oh, Army. right, these are seats. Yeah, they're seats. Taking Very on nice. the Africa Corps, and so far, it's looking like a bit of a slugging match. We've already lost one of the cruisers, but what a surprise against when you're facing the might of this. Oh, there's a flak 88 over there. Yeah, yeah, that's what it wants that in. Pop. I love the 25 pounder there and, and the half naked artillery crew. This is sweaty work. And this is a demo board people have been playing on this today. All right. So this is where the epic story all began. This is, this is Epic ACW. And again, I'm seeing some of the Sarissa scenery that came with a different sort of starter options that you had and all the different kits that have been out since then so you've got your union troops of course yeah uh, on this side we've got the, uh, sorry those are the confederates i got that wrong oh, okay. i can I see the uh, confederate battle flag there for I sure get that one. um yep. we've got cavalry we've got uh Zwans Zwans. on the yep. side of the yep. union yep. And I never realized how big that yeah. building is. <laughs> it's a beast. I got a few of the bombs. Yeah, still a few of these for the store stock. This thing yep. is just impressive. It's hard to store. How big yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's tiny building. Absolutely. Oh, Iron Brigade. How can ah. you mix Iron Brigade? So are these, are these, um, oh, they're metal. Yeah, I can feel metal. that right away. So 
Uh, yeah, we had a, we were talking to Stallone. He was saying about the Iron Brigade and the uniforms are a bit different. Yeah. So lovely to see the casualty marker yeah. there. I can see as well. Use. Really nice. And these balls were all playable for people That's today, right? Uh, yes. Excellent. Well, look at this beauty. What have we got here? Oh, this marquee is touching yes. me from oh, behind God. somewhat inappropriately. <laughs> inappropriate. So this is just epic Waterloo in all its glory. This is beautiful. An allied coalition of Britain slash other allied forces, because they yep. were, uh, versus the, Pr uh, and the Prussians, sorry, versus just the might of the French army being brought down uh, upon the poor unsuspecting allies. And you got you got the the kind of the, the full range on display have, here, yes. haven't you as well? Even in, it right right down to the Prussians, but this is the Sarissa scenery yep. that's been commissioned as part of it. It's the different good, and it's a good chunk of different painting styles on top. So we've got fairly uh, various people, but uh, uh, painted these. But what uh, we've got this terrain piece that we built in store. Um, nice, an orange grove. Yeah, orange grove because what the Hesson without that. And then you've got all the different cavalry. I mean, I can see with some of these French units, the different companies have got yeah. different pom poms, That's lapels, yep. and so forth. It's it's lovely to see Beautiful. someone takes that much love and care mm -hmm. over their collection. Yeah, this absolutely. is what Napoleonic Epic was supposed to be, like, yes. and it delivers. Yep, oh. absolutely. Uh, hi there. So this is one of Duncan's boards. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself for the guys? Hi, uh, my name's Andy. I help out Duncan with uh, the board. Um, De you demo you know what demoing the games? Yeah, demoing the games, basically kind of demonstrating what uh, you know how to play the game. This is this young man's first game. So he's his first ever ball action his game. First ever yeah, ball action I actually game. love ball action. I yep. got into it since last September. Really nice, and you still haven't been able to get a game until today. Yeah, I have technically received uh, the what's it called again? Band of Brothers, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah Band of Brothers. Love that show. Yeah, I, quite understandable. All right, um, we're gonna we're gonna interview Duncan a, a little bit later, yeah, but this is the chance to play on this board at, at Warlords Open Day is is a great opportunity, and it's a lovely little scenario you've got set up. I understand that the guns are not that useful when the Americans start flanking them, so they kind of abandon the guns and yep. fight back. Yep, which is exactly what we've actually got the team there. They've effectively abandoned their gun and they're engaging the uh, the Americans to work their way down the French system. But in but in your mission, if they can keep the guns firing, they they're scoring the for that firing, as well. So yeah. that so the German players got some act, yes. some choices to make there yeah. tactically. Such a beautiful board. Nice to talk to you. We'll get and see the next one. And kind of what we got here. This is not ball action. No, it's not. This is our. This is one of our uh, generic boards. But on the board is Slade. Nice. Oh yes, players. I can see yeah. the creepy dude himself. Nope, Slade. He's walked out. Look at that. So it's the start of sets, uh, sands the buildings, they went somewhere, uh, and then some of the expansion sets. We've got Camorian um, Warband mm -hmm. and his leader, Balor, the evil eye, and a couple of the new uh, animal figures that were released a little while ago. Right, you know, and as a system is slain similar to the other two 2008 AD uh, games. Exceptionally similar. Uh, yeah. There's a and quite similar to your zombie game as well. Absolutely. It's that guy's yeah. system. The biggest yeah. difference is that it's more combat oriented. So the uh, close combat rules have been adapted to feel a bit more like a back and forth battle, whereas the other 2008 AD games have been a bit more like you charge, charge a wax, and then that's it. Right, right. So, so a, a bit, bit more, more combat fluid. focused. Yeah, a bit more fluid. Uh, magic is a thing it's not like magic as we might know it it's through blood sacrifice and spending of blood points that's the kind of magic i like yeah which provides uh, bo boons like summoning animals the rising the dead again the dead Sweet. and bringing new things to the table to change the change the the game and then you've got the feet cards you've got unique cards which belong only to particular characters so like slain has his warp out so he becomes the warp creepy. out. Yeah, warp out. A warp, warp out, not warp out. It's oh, not sorry. outing for war. Fuck <laughs> her up, ladies. Oh dear. Um, and then the normal sleep feet cards, which come in two flavors: sun and moon, which have, uh, which mm -hmm. get stronger and weaker over the game. So we've got these little cards, little tokens here, which basically affect how powerful these are. So at one point. All your sun feet will be more powerful than your moon feet. Then suddenly the next turn, all the moon feet are more powerful than the sun. Mixing it up a bit. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Let's have a look at the next uh, board. Move on. 
So these were the games that were uh, the boards that were playable in the tent there. Connor, how, how do you feel it's got it's gone through? You had a lot of participation. Yeah, I think so. I've, I've been to be honest, back and forth between different. You're boards. running a lot of different yeah, boards yeah. as well uh, in here. I started with uh, with Slain this morning. Yeah. And I've recently just jumped onto doing the uh, the desert board. Yep. I think it's gone down pretty well. People are uh, really enjoying. Uh, so the the, the the spectacle we have available. I mean, to be f we're here now when in another room you can get a free tank if you're prepared exactly. to build it and there's still people want to play, yeah. which says a, a lot, lot for it. Way. Well, look, thanks for your time. Yeah, it was a great set friend. of demo boards. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, big question is, how do you keep war gamers quiet of an afternoon? You give them a tank to build. Hi there, so um, do you want to introduce yourself to the viewers and say what, what you're showcasing today? Hi, uh, my name is Harry, I'm showcasing Victory at Sea here at the Wall of Games Open Day. Uh, we're currently doing a scenario of U-boat hunting, so either the Germans or the Japanese will be facing off against Allied forces in either the Atlantic or in the Pacific. Um, currently the scenario is set the Royal Pindy, she's transporting very precious cargo. Of uh, troops? Uh, yes, and of vital gold supply to... Oh, vital gold supply, yep. But the Germans have been alerted and are currently up for troll and want to sink her. So, um, obviously, intercept communication by Allied Command have alerted them to this. So they've dispatched the very sturdy and readily available HMS Belfast in order nice. to intercept. Which is a beautiful model to choose because you can still see HMS Belfast moored on the Thames today. All right, thanks a lot, mate. That's okay, no worries. Another great game of Wallard. Day. Hi there. So, do you, would you like to introduce yourselves to, to, to the guests? Who are you? Uh, my name's Andy Chambers. Uh, I've been working as a professional game designer now for 32 years. 32 years? Yes, uh, you might know me from places such as Games Workshop, White Dwarf, you might have heard of that. 40,000. La La, Gorkamorka, Necromunda, Battlefree Gothic. Did you say Necromunda? Yes. There's a lot of fans out there of old Necromunda, I'm certain that's of that. Annoying. But that's not what you're doing today. Today you are here to... Uh, this is Blood Red Skies, which is a, a game of my own design and conception, mm. uh, which is World War II mass fighter combat game. Right? Was... And, and people are just coming up but playing this today, there's a few other people. Uh, yeah, Ken, Ken, Ken is here, he's, he's one of the... With his Air Marshal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, sure. um, he's part of the Blood Red Skies community. He's got a very nice active community, Blood Red Skies. Right, uh, yeah. He's demoing games for me because I'm a lazy, lazy person. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, and you remember the rules as they were intended rather than how they came uh, out right, in the final right, edit. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. I mean, I, I've played a couple yeah. of games of Blood Red Skies mm. and it, it really caught me that it's it's it doesn't play like another game that oh. I've played, I feel like I shoot at things and rarely shoot things down. And actually, in a lot of the games I did play, once something had died, the game ended. Yes, yes. You know, because it's more about accumulating a morale advantage or an abstract you advantage. Your squadron, uh, yeah. You make firepower so that will eventually flee the scene. Shooting an aircraft helps, but it's not the final determinant on who's going to like hold the, the field at the end of the day. Yeah, so it's, it's not a game about, it's not a game about position. And gaining that advantage, you can't even shoot unless you've got an advantage over your uh, opponent. Yeah, we're, we're basically, Blood Red Skies kind of a, comes from two places. One was I spent a year flying in a virtual Luftwaffe uh, in World War Two Online. So <laughs> right, I okay. The hard way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other one was I, I read a lot around World War Two about pilots, about planes, thought about flying and so forth. Mm -hmm. Because it turns out tactics in the air are as different to tactics on the ground as submarine combat is. Yeah, it's whole, yeah, whole yeah. Own it's its own thing. Yeah. And one thing pilots always talked about a lot was having the advantage, pressing the advantage, yeah. using the advantage. Yeah. So rather than use like a, a formal altitude system, like a lot of systems use. Yeah, yeah. But those guys only cares about are they higher than you? Are they lower than you? Are they about on your level? Yeah. Uh, and everything works within an advantage system, which gives state planes state. You can yep. only be shot down if you're disadvantaged. Yeah. If you're advantaged, the world is your oyster. You yes. You're, you're there high up waiting to take your shot. You swoop down like the eagle you are. Yeah. And when you're disadvantaged, you're a pigeon struggling along, hoping that all through. And as well as the planes having unique cards, mm -hmm. there's then there's then other there's other elements which traits. are we call these traits. And some of these are sort of doctrinal, some of these are theatre based or conditions based. But three things. 
traits uh, to do with the aircraft itself. Yeah. Uh, which are things like, for so example, we're, Wildcats are robust, so they take a bit less damage when they're shot at. Yep. Uh, then there are doctrines as well, which mm -hmm. is uh, another card that is, is basically what your squadron is trained to do, yep. what they're trained in. Uh, and then there's theatre cards, which can represent things like weather, flat, radar support. Mm -hmm. um, so mist is a bigger deal in the channel than it is in the Pacific. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Because, well, you can use any cards you want. We've got some little lists of like what are historically accurate ones to use in different theatres, mm -hmm. uh, including what kinds of weather to use and things like that. So, But at the end of the day, a Zero is still a lot better than a Brewster Buffalo. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Although, but every, a good pilot is has, more important in this game, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You, you'll notice on the, the planes, they've got a pilot disc on them. Yeah. Turn that round. What that shows is the skill of the pilot. Three for this guy, four for that guy. And mechanically, the way the game works is you add pilot skill onto the characteristic of the plane, and that's how many dice you roll. And the so, pilot skills go from two to five, but there's rarely more than one difference in the plane characteristic. One, two, or three. Is, is the, well, yeah. zero is a characteristic as well. Zero, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But so, pilot but skill is really a big yeah, thing so in this game. Key. It's more about the pilot than it is the plane in many yeah. regards. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for your time. My it's been a, been a real pleasure. This is God Red Skies. Well, guys, this is the other Wasdale board. This is Breakall Manor. This is the bit where the old easy company take on the old German guns. Beautiful board. Wasdale normally uses this for his demo table. And the other one is more of an exhibition one, which you'll see with the Kaiser. He's doing an interview with him as we speak. Beautiful board, guys. Great day. Um, Thank you. This is an annual thing. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, I'll be doing this every year. All see right. you again see you next, next year. year. Thanks, guys. Bye. Here we see the Kaiser in his native habitat, setting up his camera ready for an interview on the current on board. Here and off the Azera. Clear and off the Azera. It didn't come with the lapel, mate. Let's get this on you. This is not a triple. I've got it. 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 I've